Good afternoon, everyone. Have you ever wished your room would smell nicer or your own self? I certainly have. So today I will be making a fruity or melonish smelling liquid. The liquid in question which I'll be making, I made some right over here, there's not much, is called isopropyl acetate. It's an ester made out of vinegar and isopropyl alcohol. Now you may be wondering, um, why don't you just buy fruit smelling... So now that we got any questions which you might have out of the way, I'll be demonstrating to you the process. Isopropyl acetate is an organic ester made up from isopropyl alcohol, which I have in this small jar, and acetic acid vinegar, which I have right over here. It has a very weird shape to it, like most organic molecules do, so I'm afraid there wasn't any stone set instructions for this, as I was hoping. However, the typical theory of this should be enough to be able to produce it. So in terms of materials, I will need exactly 40 milliliters of 7% acetic acid, uh, 1 milliliter of isopropyl alcohol, and uh, 9 milliliters of 33% hydrochloric acid. Surprisingly, each of these would be 1 milliliters, uh, there would be 1 milliliter of the special molecule which we need in each of these three jars. So fluoric acid would be a much better alternative to hydrochloric acid. However, I obviously do not have access to that, so hydrochloric acid it is. So the first step of making my house smell like a fruit garden would be to mix all of these three molecules together. So mixing them is actually a little problem on its own. There's a specific order to mix this, or you might accidentally evaporate one of the acids and end up looking like one of the orcs in Lord of the Rings. So this is the order. You get the hydrochloric, no, you get the rubbing alcohol and you pour it, the isopropyl alcohol, and you pour it inside of the vinegar like this. After which you get the hydrochloric acid and pour that inside of the big jar as well. Be careful not to spill any of it. That's going to burn everything around. Now just cork it and you are done for the mixing part. Now. We need to do everything else. So the next step of this would be to heat this up to roughly 60 to 110 degrees. The textbook only says 60 degrees. However, Google says other words, and I'd much rather prefer Google over any textbook. Now here you just can't leave this overnight, but a little heat never hurts anyone in organic chemistry. It speeds up reactions. A little bit of heat never hurts anyone. Besides, of course, the Paris Notre Dame Cathedral. So I'll now give it a hot water bath by placing it in this cup with very hot water. If I get a thermometer in here, yeah, 66 degrees, 67 here you. We need to maintain it at this temperature for a few hours. Theoretically, you can leave it cold overnight or for a few hours, but it's always better for it to be hot. Before I forget, yeah, I would recommend uh, opening the cork before you pour the ho boiling hot water inside of it and only putting the cork on top of it afterwards. Because the last time I did, this thing completely blew up and the cork hit me square in the forehead. Because physics, you know, gases expand when heated. Now it should be safe to keep like this. So I have left this thing sitting here for a few hours while heating up the water inside of it occasionally. I also then left it overnight, you know, for additional effects as you need very certain conditions for the process to be reversed. So no harm in keeping it for a little longer. You can see that after the long wait, the liquid inside of it looks absolutely the same as it was. Oh, that's no surprise, it's supposed to work this way. But I was kind of hoping it would become green or begin glowing or something, that would be cool. But no, uh, jokes aside, scientifically it should look exactly like it. Anyway, so we now managed to successfully esterize ethyl acetate. I refuse to call it by its IUPAC name, as that name is very weird. But here we have a few milligrams of it dissolved inside of this water and everything else. Now for a test, I'll bring this up, open this and take a sniff. <coughs> oh, it's a strong odor. It smells kind of sweet, but it still does reek of vinegar. 
You think I learned from the first time when I tried smelling pure cobalt gas not to smell chemicals which I kept bottled up before, but apparently I did. So now I can't to just sell it because it will be very hard for me to maintain the optimal temperature for this. And because I have a new stove, I can't use the typical setup. Also because that will break the flask. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to pour nearly boiling water into this cup and put this thing inside. So in hopes that the liquid inside will heat up to like 90 degrees or so and all of the isopropyl acetate which boils at 89 degrees will evaporate, 90 or above. So we have 11 degrees of wiggle room over here. Now this process which shall be doing with, you know, cleaning it is not exactly a super efficient one. There will be a whole ton staying inside, which will stay inside of this jar, but I'm just doing it to actually show that I succeeded in distilling this and making So pour some boiling hot water into this. Hope the flask doesn't absolutely shatter. And we will then see if there's any water dripping on the other side. Pour some coolant into it. So this jar is expected is not filling up with anything because of the terrible setup which I have. Like for example, it's probably already below 89 degrees. Yeah, 70 degrees or so. I need to repeat this process a lot with new water constantly for this thing to have much effect. I'm only expecting like a drop or two inside of this thing as it is. I didn't manage to get much of it. I only got roughly a drop of it. It's very hard to see, but it behaves differently from water. For example, if I try to uh, both move them downwards, the isopropyl acetate actually flows over the water stays on top. They have different physical properties, which does prove that I managed to get it. However, I didn't manage to extract a lot of it via distillation, so most of the isopropyl acetate is still in here. Uh, it reeks very hard. The whole room smells like a fruit, basically. So I managed to get this bottle of Water mixed with isopropyl acetate. The hydrochloric acid which was inside of it already evaporated with the distillation. This hydrochloric acid evaporates extremely easily. So this bottle should only contain mostly vinegar, a little bit of rubbing alcohol, and a bit of isopropyl acetate. It smells very fruity, like a melon right now. So, now then, as I don't quite have any attractive girl to give this as a perfume to, I will do one thing to it, which is very typical of me. Great, so that is how you subjugate your whole family to smelling fruit for a few hours in the house non-stop. Uh, this is this two weeks upload of mad science. I'll try to upload more. Uh, Alright, that's it. Be seeing you.